Hello and welcome to the Corporate Development Academy, Kodak, an online series where relevant business topics are discussed. Thank you for taking out time to watch the episodes and for your comments and support. The team and I are very grateful. My name is Chibuzo Okechuku. is guided by principles and laws. We have principles like sowing and reaping, planting and harvesting, giving and receiving, everything has its time and season, and many others. We also have laws like power, motion, and karma. These laws and principles exist to give us a better understanding of how things operate and help us shape ourselves with the decisions we make and the path that we choose. They teach us to understand the difference between right and wrong, pride and humility, good and evil, and make us take responsibility for our thoughts, actions, associations, and activities in search of success and fulfillment. In business, there are principles and laws that expose us to the reality of how our businesses are affected. Our topic today is the physics of business. A business is a person's regular trade, profession, or occupation. It involves carrying out a series of activities for the benefit of oneself or others with the desired outcome of profit making. The word business comes from busy, and that means spending time doing something. In physics, there are different laws that guide certain statements of fact. The law of gravity, for instance, which explains that all objects left or released without a hold or force applied to it will automatically be pulled down by gravity. In physics, everything can be scientifically explained. Like why a person or a large rock can drown in water, but a ship will stay afloat, no matter what, and many other laws. However, in business, things are only explained by activities that are carried out on them. Take two businesses conducting or providing the same services, for example, and they're even located within the same environment. You find that one is possibly more patronized and preferred to the other. Now, there's no law explaining this categorically. It's simply according to the activities that are carried out on each of them. As the activities change, the resulting outcome can also be affected and different. However, since physics in simple terms refers to the science of how things work, there can therefore be a physics behind businesses and their outcomes. You see, the science of how business works is what we're going to discuss today. Now, just like we have the laws of motion, thermodynamics, and others, today we would look at three laws of business which explains how activities carried out can affect the outcome of a business. Similarly, just like the laws of motion relates to objects' movement, to the forces that are acted on it, the laws of business will relate business growth to activities that are carried out on the businesses. So let's take a look at the three laws of business. The first one, a business will remain in the state at which it is at any given time unless further activities are carried out on it. You see, we're all capable of developing brilliant ideas for profitable businesses or for anything that we require. But an idea will continue to be an idea until something further is done. A registered company will only be that. A business plan will forever be a document until something more is done to it. A business that has five customers will only have five customers or even lose them except further strategies for customer acquisition is done. It is not enough to have an idea. Oh, that's very good. It's not enough to have a business plan or to even start a business. Now, that is very, very good and a brilliant step to take. But further activities are carried out. Unless an extra is done, things like branding, marketing, promoting, expanding, and others, it will remain in that state that it is. 
You see, some people start a business without even a three-year plan in view. Now, you should have at least three or five or even ten years plan. And this does not mean you have to have everything all figured out. Just a vision of how you intend or you expect the business will grow. But some people just start and leave their businesses to the winds of time to carry the business along. Unfortunately, this should not be the case. Growth is the target. You need to grow from an idea in the mind to a business plan on paper and then to a registered business and then to a startup. And then you start developing your customer base. Your business will remain that way until you carry out further activities to increase your customers, improve your services, compete actively, and then expand at every stage. Until you do something, the business does nothing. So your business will remain in the exact state or level it is at, at any point in time. Like I mentioned, until something extra is done. Remember, these activities depend on you as they would either improve the business or destroy it. Rest assured, it will change the state of your business. That is guaranteed. This is a law that applies to all businesses, no matter the sector. The second law, the activities carried out on a business will be equal or directly related to its size and growth speed. Now, this means the strategies, the approach, the things you do directly to your business should be commensurate to the desired size and the growth rate. Some people start a business today and desire a billion in profit the next day, yet you refuse to spend money to achieve it. You are reluctant to invest in advertising, quality delivery, training, value offering, social media marketing, and human resource. You fail to understand that these activities are what will determine how big your business becomes and how long it takes you to get there. Depending on the size of your business, the activities carried out should be in the same ratio. If you have a location-specific business, you cannot promote on social media to the entire world. What you need to do is to promote specifically to your prospective customers in your precise location. Say you have a logistics business in a particular state. Then why do you advertise to the entire country? You are better off targeting your segmented customer base for the best outcome. The bigger you want to grow, the more activities you need to carry out. Understand that more effort is required to go up than coming down. Imagine climbing a flight of stairs or rolling a large rock up a hill. It will require much more energy, time, strategy, and power going up than when you're coming down that stairs or rolling the rock down the hill. What you will do to your business will determine how big you get. The third law, for every business, there is an equally just as profitable competition or alternative. Look, you have to understand that the second you have an idea for an innovation or to improve on an existing venture, you automatically enter into a pool where others with similar ideas already are or will eventually belong to soon enough. For every hundred customers that you get, it is a hundred customers your business has prevented a competition or alternative from getting, and vice versa. This law just identifies and highlights the need to continuously improve and maintain the momentum. Take, for example, telecommunications in Nigeria. The first company came and enjoyed monopoly of the market. They determined the price of everything. As the other players penetrated the market, prices were determined by competitors' preference, government laws, and others there would always be an equally competitive venture. This also refers to actions and consequences in business. With every activity carried out, your business will be made to bear the consequences, either by growth or breakdown. This also is a guarantee. Now here, it's time for you to understand business strategies like Potter's Five Forces, which speaks of the internal and the external effects that can have on a business on the bargaining power or the SWOT analysis where you can now understand where your opportunities lie 
and what threats your business could be exposed to under the circumstances. Also know that business growth can be affected by external forces like technological advancements, disease outbreaks, government policies, and many others. Once your business becomes a brand, it is instantly affected by everything around it. Internally, by the activities that are carried out, the expertise of the management, and also externally, like the presence of active competition, unforeseen circumstances, and change in times. At every point, your business must be in motion. Otherwise, it can easily be displaced by external forces, thereby changing its direction and speed. Now, speed is not the focus, but movement is. So as long as you keep moving in the right direction, that's progress. However, according to the law, speed is affected by force, effort, or the activities that you carry out, and also the weight of the object it is applied and that the force is applied on. This speaks of the feasibility and dynamics of your business. Consider a person attempting to push a car. The movement of the car will be determined by the force applied in pushing and the weight of the car and its dynamics. And by that, I mean whether the car's handbrakes are active or disabled. Also, with every extra person that joins in pushing the car, the effort and energy expended by each person is reduced and the weight of the car becomes less of a problem to each person. You see, in business, it is better to work with others in order to benefit from their expertise, their diversity of knowledge, and their experience. Collaboration over competition. Partnership over ownership. Why use up energy going at it alone, like a lone ranger, when you can develop faster, growing the business, among others? Finally, your business is your business, and so its outcome is up to your own input. But remember, these laws and principles are important and they keep your business growing because how far you are willing to go in business will determine how fast you eventually grow in business. This is simply called the physics of business. That's all we can take on this episode. Please share this video so others connected to you can watch it and learn from it. Also, keep liking our page and invite others to do the same. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and help us grow the Kodak community. Thank you for watching and see you next time. This is Kodak.